George Taylor, although he studied grain markets, his methods apply to futures markets and stock markets as well. And although he based his knowledge, his, his measurements on markets in the 1950s, they are equally important and applicable to today's trading. So let's go through how to determine the numbers based on Taylor's book method. Taylor's method aims to determine where to buy and where to sell. And as traders, isn't that what we want to know? I mean, wouldn't you want to know that the market was going to go up and you buy at, at a low and you knew that it was going to go up? You want to know where it's going to buy, where to buy. But you also want to know where to sell, when to get out. So what we measure based on Taylor's book method is how far the market rallies or declines from one day to the next. There are several calculations that we have to do to go into measuring these numbers. And I'm going to go through them, I'm going to explain them, then I'm going to show you what they mean, and then I'm going to show you how to calculate them. First, there's what's called the rally number. And the rally number is the difference between today's high and yesterday's low. How far the market goes up from one day to the next. Then the decline number, which is the difference of yesterday's high minus today's low. How far the market declines from day to day. The buying high number is the difference between today's high and yesterday's high, how far the market uh, rallies above the previous day. And the buying under number, yesterday's low minus today's low, how far the market declined today from the previous day. And then we have what's called the pivot breakout number. Well, you've heard the expression, when the market breaks through a, a point of resistance, that resistance point becomes support. Well, the pivot breakout number is what we're talking about here. So we have five calculations that we're going to do to determine the next day's market action or trading zone. I should say trading zone, not market action. We're not, not up to that yet. So let's go into the buy envelope, the support envelope first. There are four numbers that comprise the buy envelope, where support is for the following day. The decline number is the first number in the buy envelope, and it's the difference between yesterday's high and today's low. And we calculate this number and then subtract the decline number from today's high. Next is the buying under number, which is the difference between yesterday's low and today's low. And then we subtract that buying under number from today's low. The third number that goes into the buy envelope is today's low. Remember, we're calculating these numbers at the end of the day, each day. And finally, the pivot breakout sell number, which is uh, part of the buy envelope, but if, it's, if we break out of that, that number becomes resistance. So let's go through the, the, these numbers and what they really show. And I've provided the images here so that you can understand, you can see where, where these measurements, what these measurements really are. First, the decline number, the difference between yesterday's high and today's low. And the decline number measures how far the market has declined from one day to the next. I take a three-day average. So I take the average decline number for three previous days and subtract it from today's high. Next is the buying under number. The buying under number is the difference between yesterday's low and today's low. And oftentimes, this would result in a negative number. But it's the difference between yesterday's low minus today's low. And again, I take the average of three previous days and subtract that from today's low. That's the second number in our buy envelope. The third number in the buy envelope is today's low. Because in a bullish market, prices will stop at or before this, this number, this price. And in a bearish market, prices will penetrate this price. The fourth number in the buy envelope is the pivot breakout sell number. 
And again, the pivot breakout cell number, it, could, it, it part of the buy envelope, but it becomes resistance if prices break. And the calculation of the, of the pivot breakout cell number is the day's high, the day's low, and the day's close divided by three. That's the average of the last day's high, low, and close. And then we multiply that by two, and from that number, we subtract today's high. So those are the four numbers comprising the buy envelope. And this pivot breakout number, in addition to Taylor's book method, on this uh, book by George Angel, he uses, uses this number as well. He had a trading system where uh, in that trading system, he also uses this pivot breakout number. So the calculations in the buy envelope, and I've, I've gone through it, uh, I've presented it here in some detail, and uh, don't write it down, you can download this uh, material to your computer. I've shown this three-day, although I, I show a five-day cycle, but keep in mind it's a three-day, we're, we're, we're studying George Taylor's three-day market cycle, the decline number, the buying under number, and the pivot breakout sell number. Here you can study how these numbers are calculated and you can do these calculations yourself. I use a three-day average. In other words, I average the decline number and the buying under number over three days. So I take a three-day average of these numbers. Now the decline number, when you calculate it, remember, you're going to subtract the decline number from the last days, today's high. Similarly, when you calculate the buying under number, you're going to subtract that from today's low. So these are the calculations that go into the support envelope, the buy envelope. Today's low being one number and the pivot breakout sell number being the fourth. Next is the sell envelope, the resistance envelope. We have the rally number, the difference between today's high and yesterday's low. We calculate that. And then we add that to today's low to get one number of the sell envelope. Next, the buying high number, which is the difference between today's high and yesterday's high. We calculate that and we, we add that to today's high. The third day in the sell envelope is today's high. And the fourth number is the pivot breakout buy number. And like the pivot breakout sell number, it's a component of the sell envelope, but resistance becomes support if prices break that number. We see that the rally number is today's high minus yesterday's low. And that measures how far the market has rallied from one day to the next. In other words, how far the market goes up from the bottom of the previous day to the top of today. And I take the average, I do this over three days, I take a three-day average and I add that to, to today's low. Next is the buying high number, which is the difference between yes, today's high and yesterday's high. So we see how far today's high exceeded yesterday's high. And again, I take a three-day average of the buying high number, and I add that to today's high to get the next day's uh, buying high number as part of the sell envelope. The third number in our sell envelope is today's high. Uh, in, a, in a rising market, in a bullish market, prices will penetrate this, and in a bearish market, prices won't penetrate it or will stop before they get they reach that point. And the next uh, part of the sell envelope is the pivot breakout buy number, which again is based on just the last day's candle, and it's the average of the day's high, low, and close. We multiply that by two and subtract today's low. And those are the four numbers making up the sell envelope. So again, here are our candles, the rally number, the buying high number, the pivot breakout number, and how we calculate those, those three calculations plus today's high being part of that sell envelope. And remember, the rally number, we're, we're taking the average of three numbers. This is these two, these two candles, and these two candles, we take three of those, and then we add them to the low of the last day. And similarly, we take an average for the buying high number and we add 
That, we add the buying high number to the high of the last day. The pivot breakout sell number, D, L, and K, the high of, of the day, the low of the day, and the close. And we multiply that by two. We average that. We multiply by two and subtract the low. And so those are the four numbers comprising the sell envelope. And so here we have calculations of the buy envelope and the sell envelope for the following day based on the average uh, range of the previous three days price movements. So the sell envelope, the buy envelope, and the difference between these two is our, our trading range. So you see how these numbers are calculated and how we use them to discern what the trading range of the following day is going to be.